Psalm 77 to the chief musician to get to him a psalm of Asaph. Now as we enter into this psalm again there's there's sorrow or there's pain something that man just suffers all the time and to call upon God that it, where is he? I cried unto God with my voice even unto God with my voice and he gave ear unto me. God listens and we know he listens and when we come to troubles and, and it's hurting us personally pain or suffering we call upon God and we know he's listening and we're wondering why doesn't he answer right away all the way from Adam to today it's the same thing even Paul called upon the Lord three times for an ailment he had Job called upon him in the day of my trouble okay we don't know what the trouble is we don't know if it's pain or what I sought the Lord so in the day of trouble we, that we have we're not to go run to people yeah I know Jesus said they that are sick they need a physician but you're to run to the Lord first you're to pray to God and say, God, do I go to a doctor or are you going to take care of this? You don't go running to a bank in trouble. You don't go running to people in trouble. You run to God. My store ran in the night. Night is a time that is supposed to be restful. There's no sleep for this, for this person. And cease not. I got no rest. It kept me awake. My soul refused to be comforted. I tried everything. There was nothing to give me rest. I, I, I was troubled. I was in whatever it is, sorrow or pain. I remembered God and was troubled. Oh, yeah, God, you're there. Bottle of pills. Boo hoo in all night. Oh, okay, God. And was troubled and complained. I complained. He's complaining to God in prayer. See Job 7 4. You know what he's doing? He's laying it out all before God. Don't tell me, oh, you don't be angry with God. Don't don't speak your listen. This is what this guy's doing. He's telling God, listen, I am not happy. There, there's something wrong. And laying it all out. And he's complaining to God. God knows your heart. God knows how you're feeling. The worst thing you can do is lie to God by, by hiding it. Lay it all out. Tell the Lord what you're feeling. Tell the Lord how, how you feel. Tell the Lord that the injustice you think that God's doing again. If you don't think that's possible, then you need to go back or you, you need to read the book of Job. And my spirit was overwhelmed. Covered with grief or sorrow. That spirit is, is the life that God gives you. That he breathed into Adam. And Adam became a living soul. That he, Your breath. It's like you're drowning in waters and you can't breathe. And all you're doing is sucking in water. Sila. Now that's a musical rest. Again, that's a second advent passage and with trouble and all that that would be the nation of Israel just before the Lord Jesus Christ comes back as they're being chased by the Antichrist and then when you finally come to the seventh year of the tribulation of all the, the trumpets the vials and the, uh, uh, the seals the three woes you're going to be in agony and pain and suffering 
Thou holdest my eye, thou holdest my eyes waking. God. God sees you when you're waking up. God knows what time you're waking up. God knows the, the restless or the sleepful night that you had. I am so, so troubled that I cannot speak. I don't know. Like I said, it, it mentions trouble. It doesn't say. Whether it is a, a, a physical or emotional thing, but he can't even speak. He's so overloaded. And yes, as a born again Christian, you can suffer this. You can live godly, and the Bible says, All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. As you read the book, uh, Fox's Book of Martyrs, to realize that, listen, when they're in the jail cell, they probably felt like this. Yeah, I know they died at the faggots. I know that they died uh, under the, the cruelties of, of that church. Under kings and queens that rejected God and his word. I know they died at peace in the, uh, in the cruelties. But what about their life when they were in the dungeons and the prisons and all that? Don't tell me that Satan didn't work with him. Yeah, Paul and Silas had a good time. They were singing praises to God and, and praying all night long. But that's not all the time. Psalms is a good book for a Christian to read. I know it's Old Testament, but it's also much stuff here for us. Psalms is your hymnal of your Bible. This person that is writing this, this has been put to music by, by I was going to say Mr. Asaph. By Asaph, a man that was under David's musical. That this God was so this guy was so holy and so righteous and, and so looked upon by David that the Holy Spirit says Asaph and gives him a name and a title. How many times do you see Asaph in the Bible? That's a man. That's a man that took care of the music for David. And it wasn't this garbage music that you see in the churches today. I got a question for you about this uh, uh, contemporary music. I got a question about this bluegrass music. Where is the blood of Jesus Christ in their music? Did you know that that music, genre, category, there's no blood? There are bloodless songs. I have considered the days of old, the years of ancient time. Now, what would that mean? Well, I would think, my personal opinion, from what I've suffered in my life, the book of Job, men of the Bible who actually suffered, I have gone through things in my life that Bible characters have gone through. And their names have been on the tip of my tongue. And their life has been in my ears to hear the word. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I remember Adam. Because he, by the love of his wife Eve, started all this. And today, as we are in Obamacare, we're in 2014. For us, that worse would be the old herbs, the old mother's remedy, the old home's remedy. Instead of these medicines that they give you today, that you got to take out, you know, a, a, a book of all the side effects. Why anybody would take a pill today that, that could possibly cause cancer? And they're so stupid that 
they will take that medicine that could give them cancer to cure a muscle joint pain. Why? Because they don't want to believe in God as their Savior. They don't want to put their trust in God. I call it to remembrance. You know why you take the Lord's Supper? What's it say over there? What does Paul say? Why you take the Lord's Supper? Do you remember that Christ has done for you? The, the finished atonement of his body and blood upon that cross. And then reminds you that he is coming, that he's coming again for us. That in the first book of Thessalonians chapter 4 it says, Comfort ye one another with these words. Psalm 77 matches the, the books for the Christians by Paul. You are to remember the Lord. You are to remember, the, call the remembrance, my song in the night. I thought he couldn't sleep. He couldn't sleep. So you know what he did? He did something that Paul said. I'm in pain. Oh. No, that's not what Paul said. Rejoice evermore. In his pain, in his suffering, or whatever the troubles in his life was, he sang to the Lord. How about that? What do you do when you can't sleep at night? You ever sing to the Lord? I commune with my own heart. Is it wrong to talk to yourself, to ask yourself advice? Absolutely not. Men in the Bible have done it. Mark those out where they say I've communed with my own heart, or I, I, uh, I spoke with myself, or I talked with myself. Men of God do that. You got to weigh out the facts yourself sometimes. You got to lay it all out before you. Maybe even put it down on paper. The yeas and the nays of what you're dealing with. And my spirit, that which, that which my life is, made diligent search. I checked the facts. Many American Christian born again today, they're in deep trouble. Because they didn't check the facts. They didn't diligently search what they signed their name to. They didn't check it out first. They didn't. You know what's remarkable? Even the life of Moses and David. How many times they did in Joshua they did not pray. When that when that when that when that people came to Joshua. And they disguised themselves, you know, as we were far away, and we've been walking forever to get to you guys. You know, Joshua never asked the Lord, and yet they were the Lord's enemy. They didn't go into search. They didn't check those guys out. As good as Joshua was, like us, he failed in prayer. Will the Lord cast off forever? What's that? And will he be favorable no more? You ever been in so much trouble and you're praying to God and you're praying to God and you think, well, he's not answering. You want to ask Job about that? We know Job was covered from head to toe at least seven days, one week with bowls at least. I'm going to say something. I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to look through the book of Job as I go read through again. And I'm not sure, but there's something that's called to my mind about the book of Job that I don't know if he, I don't know if the Bible records, and I could be wrong on this, but that the boils ever went away. I'm going to read through that and see if I can find the healing. Listen, you can be in prayer with something that's going on in your life and have great faith in God to so say, God, I believe you can heal me, but do I go to the doctor? 
Lord, why am I still suffering this after all this time? Are you ever going to do anything? I wouldn't do that. Paul did. Job did. I bet you David felt like that when, when, when his and Bathsheba's baby was about to die. And God told him that baby was going to die. And he still fasted and prayed. Don't get pious with me. Because I've been in pain and suffering. Not as much as the next person. I'll, I'll, let me say that. But I've been with points where, where events in my life and I've told God I don't like it. I have told God, say, God, hey, Jesus, don't you remember? And I know you suffered more than I, but don't you remember the pain it was that you suffered? Now, I did not suffer as much as you did, Jesus, but don't you remember the pain? I am not tolerant of pain at all. And there are born-again Christians that love the Lord, got the right Bible, maybe cannot go to church because they're in a hospital bed for, the, for their life, and witness to the doctors and nurses and people that come into the room. Third-degree burns. Or you get bed sores because you got to be in bed, and it's, it's sore, it hurts, it's painful. Because you can't get out of the bed. And they got to put uh, uh, salve and stuff on you. And you're lying in that bed, Lord. Is his mer God's mercy <coughs> clean, gone forever? You know who's going to be crying that? Go back to verse 3 and look at the Sheila. Israel is going to be crying that verse out during the tribulation period. They're going to be crying out to God, is there any hope for us anymore? And the Bible calls it the time of Jacob's trouble. You want to know how bad the tribulation period is? Psalm 77. They're going to call upon God, and God's going to hear them, but for seven years. The only answer God's going to give them, what is the answer that God will give that Jew in, the seven, in those seven years? What's the only thing he's going to give them? The 144,000. And what's that going to do? Here comes, a, here comes one of the 144,000 to you. And you believe what the Bible, you believe what he tells you to do. You turn to the, the Jew, turns to the Lord Jehovah, to the Messiah. What's going to happen? The Antichrist is going to be after your neck. You just lost everything. You just lost your life. Because listen, you got a death sentence. You just lost your job. You just lost your Jewish family. You just lost your Jewish home by receiving that Messiah. Ask any Jew today that believes in the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Ask how their family treats them. And you got the seven vials. You got the seven bowls. You got, I mean, the seven trumpets. You got the seven seals and the three woes. And the absence of God. Until he prepares Revelation 12, that time for the Jew to head down to sell pizza or whatever God's going to have him. Is his mercy clean gone forever? That's how bad Jacob's trouble is going to be. Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has have he, God, in anger, shut up his tender mercies? There's the seal out again. You know, is this the wrath of God upon man? 
It is Satan doing all that he's going to do to man and God's going to allow. That the Lord Jesus Christ comes back as a lying, angry, and show no mercy. Oh, what did it say? Is his mercy clean gone forever? Oh, yes. To those that rejected God time after time after time and rejected Jesus Christ time after time after time. What's, what's it say in Revelation? At the certain points it said, and they repented not. Okay? Then God will no more be merciful to them. What did the rich man want in hell in Luke 16? He wanted mercy. And he ain't going to get it. You know what man's going to cry out in hell? Will the Lord cast off forever? Will he be favorable no more? Is his mercy gone forever? Does he... Does his promise fail forevermore? A man in hell is going to cry that out. Because in hell, the lake of fire, there is no more mercy. Your mercy is now to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with thy mouth. The, 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 the belief in your heart. Now is the day of salvation, the Bible says. That 7, 8, and 9, that, that, is, that is a time memorial of, of a Christian suffering, of a person suffering, of the Jew suffering, and of the man that's in hell suffering. Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his tender mercies? See that. And I said, this is my infirmity, but I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. I'm going through a lot of trouble right now, but I'm going to, remember, I'm going to count my blessings. I'm going to still love God as God is who he is. I'm not going to walk away like Demas did. And we don't even know he said that he loved the pleasures of the world. Demas didn't forsake God because of pain or suffering. He just loved the world. According to Paul. Job did not forsake the Lord. Hezekiah with, with the death that God told him prepare his house before he's going to die. Did not dispel and turn away from God. Turned his back to the wall and prayed to God. Rejoice. Evermore. And when Paul says that with the Bible that we're studying, that's even in when you feel you've been isolated from God. And you're not. For whatever reason, God's just not doing what you want him to do. And this is not a sin issue. Or then again, it could be a sin issue if God's chastising you. I will remember the works of the Lord. Surely I will remember the work, thy work, thy wonders of old. That's why God does things in your life. That's why God answers prayers. That's why miraculous things do happen in your life. That you can look back and say, you know what? God got me through that. God took care of me. And he's going to take care of me again. Maybe not like that. But God will. God has and God will. I will meditate also all thy work. I'm going to think about what you've done for me, Lord. I'm going to think about all the stories in the Bible. I'm going to find somebody in the Bible that is going through what I'm going through. And I'm going to read about them and I'm going to study to show myself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of God, the word of truth. I'm going to meditate on everything you've done, Lord. Everything you've done in my life, everybody, everything that you've done in, in somebody else's life, and everything you've done through the Bible. Thy way, 
Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thy way, O God, not your way. Well, Lord, heal me now. Lord, take care of this problem now. No, God's way. God has a plan for what you're in, not you. You don't know. God knows. So thy way. Trust God and keep going. Oh, God is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? None. As a matter of fact, small G-O-D, Job 1 or 2, he may be the one that's causing your problems. Maybe. Remember, there's three that cause this problem. God, Satan, or yourself. Thou, God, art the God that doest wonders. Okay, I know you can do it. But I need guidance through what I'm going through, Lord. I need to know, am I to trust in you or am I to go to man? And what am I supposed to do, Lord? I ain't got the money, Lord. I ain't got the resources. You do. What is thy way? What is the wonders? What are you going to do for a testimony of yourself? Thou hast, God, declared thy, God, strength among the people. Listen, the entire history of the Jews were for the Jews to keep on. That's God. That's why God said every year, remember the Passover. Every year you're to do this. Every year. Because it was to point to what God has done for them, which the nation forgot. And it's to point them to, listen, if they had been faithful into the history of the Jews when Jesus Christ came, they should have received him and recognized that he was the one. But they forgot. They didn't meditate. They thought of self. And they crucified him. Thou, God, has with thine arm redeemed thy people. It's a testimony of counting the blessings. God, I can go book back to the book of Exodus and I can show you all the things that you've done for us. I can through, go through the book of Joshua and show you all the great things you've done for us. I can go through the book of Judges and show you how great that you redeemed us. I can show you a woman named Ruth and the great thing you've done in her life. I can tell you all the great things that you've done for David. Great things you've done for, for Joseph, for the troubles he had, and how you took care of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And there are Christians out there who don't know nothing about the Bible. And when they are wrecked, their lives are, are destroyed, they, oh, I'm so empty. Yeah, because you don't know the Bible. You don't know particular people in the Bible who suffer the same thing that you suffered and got out of it. You got a problem with uh, depression? You got a problem, you, you know, you just want to be alone and you, you feel like the whole world's on your shoulders? Do you know about uh, uh, Elijah? Do you know the dangers that Elijah had with that? That God could not use him no longer. You got a, a problem with sexual perversion that you don't know the story of David? Thou hast with thy arm redeemed thy people, the sons of Jacob and Joseph, Sela, no Ishmael. The twelve tribes. And notice how Joseph is pointed out. Joseph was split into two, two tribes, leaving Levites, for the Levi, for the priests, Manasseh and Ephraim. 
and Ephraim, I believe it is, and Dan are not mentioned among the 144,000. Read the blessings about Joseph and Judah that Jacob proclaims. And then when Moses blesses the tribes. And then when Moses blesses the tribes, Simeon is missing. You got to get all that stuff. You got to study your Bible. Joseph is the greatest type of the Lord Jesus Christ. The waters saw thee, O God. The waters saw thee. They were afraid. And, uh, excuse me, the depths also were troubled. It's like into trouble. Trouble's like into water here. I'm drowning. I'm overwhelmed. My spirit has no air. The clouds poured out water. There's more. More trouble. More problems. The sky sent out a sound. Now, I don't say thunder. The Holy Spirit knows how to spell T H U N D E R, send out a sound. Thine arrows. Now, it's amazing how we've been studying the Bible all the way from Genesis to Psalm 77, and God has arrows. Satan has darts. And when he shows up, Revelation 5 or 6, is it? All he has is a bow. So do you know who imitates God that Christians follow, even though they may not do it? Do you know a little God that flies around shooting arrows at people? Who is the God of love? Did you get that? Did you get that? You get that little booger there? He's stealing the arrows from God and shooting people with them, killing them. If you get shot in the heart with an arrow, listen, creamy chocolate ain't going to come out of your heart. Blood will. That little guy called Eros or called Cupid is stealing from God. God is the God of love, not Cupid. God has arrows, not Cupid. Thine arrows also went abroad. It says when Jesus Christ comes back, he's got a sword. <coughs> All right, so that sound in the skies. Now look at verse 18. The voice of thy thunder. That sound in 17 is not thunder. The voice of thy thunder was in heaven. That's the God of that's God's voice. The lightnings lighteth the world. The earth trembled and shook. There is the Lord Jesus Christ coming back. And there's some kind of sound in the skies just before he comes back. And God's going to thunder with his voice. And that sword that comes out of his mouth is going to kill. Thy way is in the sea. Thy path in the great waters. The waters are above your head. The earth, oh wait a minute, excuse me. And thy footsteps are not known. We've got paths of the second advent, but exactly where he's going, we know from city to city that he's going to go, but exactly which, how, where the path he goes, we know he goes on the king's highway, but actually where he's going to put his footsteps, we don't really know. Heck, if, if we knew that, there'd be a church over there making little shrines. Now, verse 20.
Thou, God, ledest thy people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. This whole thing has been about the tribulation. As Moses and Aaron led Israel out of Egypt, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to lead them out of Salem, Peter, or wherever they're going to go. And God's going to bring them, Lord Jesus Christ, their Messiah, is going to bring them back into the land. This entire psalm is about the Jew in the tribulation period, the, the suffering, the pain, the sorrow. What, what is the trouble in verse 2? And there was another place that mentioned trouble. I don't see real quick. There was two troubles. Well, verse 2 at least. What is that trouble? I know what that trouble is. The Bible says it's Jacob's trouble. Not Japheth or Ham. And the trouble is not, not, it's not pain and it's not physical. It's both. When those horse-like things come out and they and they but they get you with their tails as a scorpion and you are suffering, I believe, three or nine months, and you can't die. That's physical. And when your whole life has been turned upside down by the by the Antichrist because you're a Jew and he's out to kill you, that's Psalm 77 is just a preview, just a little bit of what the hardship those Jews are going to You better thank God that you're saved today, and the church is not going to go through the tribulation period. And I feel sorry for any church that teaches they're going to go through it, because they probably will, because they're not saved. And you need to throw that pastor out of your pulpit and get a guy who's going to do with a King James Bible who's going to preach you the truth and tell you how to be saved and how to avoid the tribulation and how to witness to other people and get them out of the tribulation period. You know, when you witness to people today, you are preventing them from two things. The tribulation period possible. We don't know what's going to happen, but I believe we're in the, day, in the last days and out of hell. We don't want to see people burn in hell. We don't want to see anybody go through the tribulation. But we'll just make movies. Lying movies. You couldn't compare and make a movie about Jesus Christ and his life and sufferings, Isaiah 53. You couldn't make a movie about the tribulations and the sufferings of the, of the Jews, Psalm 77. You couldn't make a movie. No way. No how. Impossible. There's no way you can show the pain and suffering that Jesus Christ went through from the the judgment of the of the Sanhedrin to Pilate's judgment to the cross. There's no way you can show the pain. And there's no way you can show the pain of three woes, the vials, the trumpets, and the and the uh, seals. How can you show a guy in pain that's going to be stung by a scorpion tail and not see, not be able to find death even though he wants it? How can you show a guy who's going to go on top of the Empire State Building and, he, and he's been stung and he's in pain and he does his swan dive off the Empire State Building, falls on the street below, gets hit by a, a Greyhound bus and gets up and is now in even more pain? You know... You know something? Man wants to live by, forever by science, and God's going to say, okay, I'll give it to you. I'll give you the ability to live forever for a short time, but I'll give you the ability. Let's see what Satan does with it. The unmerciful, the unkind, the ungracious God, Satan. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. 
thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art. And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away.